Allez, on va, on va attaquer. On va vous mettre en retard. Donc. So let's start. So welcome to this uh, workshop on the deep, deep dive uh, technique, how a storm sheet solution can protect you from APT attacks. This is a very technical um, workshop by uh, Pierre-Olivier Kaplan, who is an expert in cybersecurity at Storm Shield, and myself in charge of the producers for, for products for cyber cybersecurity. So this is the program for today. On va d'abord décrire le scénario. So, first, let's describe a cyber attack with a ransomware. We're talking about APT attacks because this is a complex attack that leads to a ransomware. After that, we will show you a demonstration, first without any protection, and then after that with our own solution, the Storm Shield solution. And finally, we will show you an example of the Lockbit gang. This is a gang that is doing a lot of ransomware work right now, and they are quite efficient at it. So we will go from fiction to reality with the MIT attack uh, representation. So as of today, a an attack with a ransomware is based on APT, which is an advanced persistent threat. So it is to be uh, differentiated with the opportunistic attacks with a word file on your email address. No, this is very different. This is an attack that uh, targets having the entire control on the information system in order to then spread the active ransomware in uh, your uh, system and detonate it at the same time on all the uh, computers in the system. So this is very different. So how does it work? We've simplified in five steps. So first there's the collect of data. Uh, so the uh, attacker is trying to find information on the target, usually it, they um, use uh, the social media or the dark web, but I will not enter into details. Uh, you have to try to, they are trying to get uh, passwords, accounts. Why? Well, because it's easy to uh, do this when you are trying to uh, do intelligence uh, on this uh, topic. So this is the first step for them. Secondly, in this example, you have the exploit of a vulnerability of an exposed system. So you have two uh, initial access. So you can just uh, use phishing to uh, steal uh, credentials. This is not very interesting. We think uh, vulnerab vulnerability is more interesting. We've seen a lot of them lately with Falling Out. That was uh, uh, a Microsoft vulnerability that would allow you to uh, just enter and take control of the computer just uh, through a Word file without uh, triggering any of the defenses. Then you have the lateralization. So there's a, an exploit that was identified. And then he gets higher privilege on the computer and then tries to see what he can do around it. So this is another vulnerability from Microsoft we are trying to do right now because the main target, of course, of an attacker is to find an exchange or an AB, which is a system that is uh, sharing information through, uh, through different computers. And once it's done, this is the rollout of the active uh, charge. So they are using GPUs, uh, existing systems, exec files or exec tools that are available on the workstation and then it is detonated after having exfiltrated the data. So it's important to understand that first they try to get the data to then do the ransomware, the, the ask for a ransom, and then they detonate so they encrypt the um, data and do uh, then later ask for a ransom for the data. If you have questions, of course, raise your hand. So this attack, let's take the 
meter attack matrix. So this is an idea of a cyber attack. How does it work? This is the full template. You can see the different steps, the intelligence, the collect of data, the exfiltration, the detonation. And so if we take our example, we will be using these techniques. So intelligence work, first scanning to find the um, available system that expose system rather than uh, collecting the data uh, on the social media, trying to find an access uh, through a front end, and then the lateralization, finding exploits on the remote services, and then you have exfiltration on a C2 uh, channel with which you have an access, and then you have data encryption uh, that data destruction, it's a bit the same because the encrypted data is not accessible if you do not have the key. So this is a bit the same. Either you destroy the data or you encrypt it. Now, about the architecture for this demo. You have the internet in the middle, the attacking workstation on one side, the social media, the front end, uh, using Java web coding, it's important, and we will explain that later. And you have the uh, LAN network of the company that is uh, using a server with database and an exchange. So it's quite standard presentation. Now, the demo. Two phase, sis. We have the first step with standard protection. So you will see two windows on your screen. So on the left side, you have the attacker's workstation. On the right side, you have the interface of the results, showing the results of what uh, of the commands he will be inputting. So you have the front uh, application, the unknown. We don't know what it is because for the attackers, uh, he doesn't know uh, what is the rest of the network, but he knows that there are workstations he's trying to find. And then you will see the results of each uh, commands inputted in uh, the command line in the right window. So you have a standard firewall between the internet and the uh, server and the, uh, and the port forwarding. And you have also the workstations and servers uh, equipped with uh, normal antiviruses and also uh, basic encryption for the workstation. So this is not a very basic uh, company. This is a company with some kind of security and Pierre Olivier will now explain the attack in itself. Thank you, Sebastian, and good afternoon, everybody. So now let's go to the attack in itself. We'll see how the attacker will try to introduce into the information system and take control of the data and then uh, go to their uh, objectives. Uh, the company is a fac fictive uh, company, it's not a real company, it's objective data, obvious data they are called in this example. So you have the attacker here on the right side, uh, they are unknown, we don't know who is. So you, for the result of the attack, he, in this first phase, he was able, through social engineering, to steal uh, an email address. So during the first phase, so intelligence work, he is analyzing the front end, the front application. So you can see uh, what the uh, attackers see. Uh, this is the portal for uh, the application. So what can he see first? And it, this jumps out. The URL is a G JSP. You are. What does it mean? It's a Java server page. It means that this is based on Java. As this person is an expert in hacking, he knows that recently there was an exploit that was discovered for the Java services. The lock for shell exploit, this vulnerability would allow people by logging into uh, a Java system, a certain service, 
to pass it and then execute the code. And the code was at the disposal of the attacker. So the attacker was able to execute a code on the server, which is great for our attacker. So he's trying to have this uh, JNDI service executed on the page through the Java coding. So this is the first phase, the intrusion. He will uh, roll out uh, his uh, Java exploit uh, exec. So he's trying to attach the victim's shell to a netcat from the attacker, so to get the total control on the machine. Once the script is started, the victim has to log in. How do you do that? Well, since the front end is a notification portal, so he's using port uh, 9001, uh, so this is the portal. This is a notice, uh, normal authentication uh, portal. And as you all know, you get uh, such information as uh, this person has tried to identify with this login and username and password. So this is the perfect place for the attacker to inject the uh, code, the comments. Uh, for password, we do, it doesn't matter. You are not trying to identify here and you start the exploit right now. So on the command line, what do you see? You have the requests. You received requests from the victim that executed the code. So this is perfect indeed. And on the other tab, you can see that we've received a connection from the shell of the victim. So we are in the root file right now. So we can uh, start a command just to clean up the bash and we succeeded. We are at the in the victim system. So now we download our own tools that will be used for the rest of the attacks. So downloading a uh, file called Tools Exploiter, for example, and just um, use this, uh, develop this uh, tool file. And there's a content. There's Racknet Locker, which is a, a ransomware that we will be using for the rest of our operations. So they are now in. And there is a compromission, and the attacker can go to the uh, can can follow. So now, what's going to happen now? The attacker is going to try and have some orientation to go to the next phase. So internal recognition. For this internal recognition, they are going to uh, guide themselves to find their way. They are going to find the IP address of the front application. And here is the IP address of the machine. Okay. Let's do a scan on the next IP. Here to scan the next IP address. We are going to analyze the outcome. The scan is taking place. You can see what's happening on the next machine. And the outcome is very interesting. First of all, SMTP. It means messenger, but not only HTTPS. And here, another element. <laughs> so these are messengers, a service which is listening and windows. So maybe it's an exchange server. But not only, the attacker is going to see the SSL. So the attacker has this conclusion. It's a very highly strategic um, server and also a domain controller. And also, if they add up these two um, servers, it means that this company does not use strict security, so it's maybe worth um, testing a recent vulnerable point. Yes, proxy login, which was revealed in 2021, you could attack an exchange and control it. And the attacker is going to do this simply to attack proxy login 
they use the exploitation. It was pre-installed and here the attacker would have downloaded with their own tools. So here they started the meta exploit and they are going to uh, choose among different options. Okay, it is being launched. Okay, proxy logon. They are going to use it through meta exploit. Okay, proxy logon. They find it, they select it, we select it. So we have selected. So before attacking it, the IP address of the victim. Then the IP address that attacks uh, makes the attack, actually, and then a mail email address, which is necessary to use proxy logon. Yes, it's very good because they have stolen this uh, address already. So you select it, you start the attack to control the server exchange. Thank you very much. Okay, the attack is taking place. You can see that the target has been seen as vulnerable. They are uh, trying to control it, and this is done. We can see that you can have a spe spe specific session. Metaprecator is a tool that allows you to start Windows commands, which is injected by Meta Exploit. So now we are controlling the uh, victim's machine, and here uh, the ransomware is launched on the on Windows. This is done. So the attacker has done their work. The it's a compromise as server exchange, and it is now in their hands. Now they go to the next uh, stage to stole, to steal uh, sensitive data. So they are going to see what's happening in the different files. So the users file, who are the users on this machine? And here, one of them is called administrator. So what is in the documents of this administrator? So we go to the file, which is called documents. This is the whole list. And one of them is called architecture.doc. You don't know what is inside, but maybe we think that we should recover it. Metaprecator allows you to download it. That's it. And you download the file, which is called architecture.doc. So now they can go to the next stage deploying the ransomware. So it's a domain controller. It's very interesting because you are the administrator of a controller domain. You can deploy these other tools to deploy your ransomware on the whole of the um, machines. Of course, the attacker can do this. What we are going to do is to execute this ransomware. We come back to uh, this other file. We go to the Windows chain. And we are going to execute the ransomware on the victim's machine. It's the actual one. OK. And the day after. All the workers in this uh, company are going to receive this message telling them that they have deciphered all their files. Sorry, there is too much noise to understand what's happening <laughs> and what the speaker is saying. So the attacker has done what they wanted to do. They have stolen data, deciphered the uh, files, so it's a catastrophe for this company. Uh, the day after uh, all the media is going to talk about this with, uh, of course, catastrophic um, business consequences, communication, legal 
um, consequences. And so what to do? How can you avoid it? What about uh, solutions uh, in order to pro be protected? And Sebastian is going to talk about the following stages. What's going to happen? Another demonstration. You have seen that all these attacks go through authorized flow, uh, flow. Yes. And you can recompile it with other different parameters, with the most known signatures. We are going to do the same now. We had different online tools which were not activated. Here we are going to activate the antivirus, all the elements. We are going to put our own solutions and to add the uh, deciphering of the files, the critical files, and to see what's happening. Okay, welcome to our parallel universe. Here they have storm sheet um, tools. We are going to see how they can respond to these threats. So these are the list of the countermeasures. And we are going to start with the frontal attack when the attacker starts with their ransomware. So what's going to happen? Where uh, different solutions are activated. First of all, we come back to the specific moment when the attacker is going to start the uh, and relaunch the uh, ransomware. What's going to happen in the window on Windows? They say an activity has been blocked. Here we can see a message saying that a process has been blocked and uh, because there has been some malicious activities. Then in the administrator machine, this is what they're going to see on their screen. These are the details of the attack, the whole cascade of the different processes and what has been blocked. On the upper part, what has been selected is that our system has, of course, detected the malicious activity. It has been blocked. So this is the first countermeasure to avoid the action of this um, ransomware. This is the first thing. The attacker is pushed back. So they had stolen um, one of the files on here. They use another uh, system and only people have the right to read it, do read it. So the attacker is going to uh, steal this file, but when they want to open it, it's going to be useless because they cannot read this file. This is a second countermeasure. SDS that ciphers the files. The attacker had been able to have access to this server and our SOS is able to detect proxy login and to block it as well. It worked well during the first uh, stage and it would deactivate the security measures. Please don't do this in your own office. So we go on and we go with by default configuration. So the we safeguard everything. And now we can deploy these updates and these deployments just for two seconds. Uh,
So then the attacker can start back with a, a new attack and you can see that he can see the target as vulnerable but when it's trying to use the, and inject the uh, meta exploit, uh, we will see what happens. So we do not have the meta pressure session appearing. You can see that exploit created but no session was created. Uh, so the attacker could not inject the meta pressure uh, session. So the administrator can see in the SES console this log file and discovers this. So you have a no log appearing saying that the partial process tried to do something and was blocked. And so you can see the entire PowerShell command that was blocked. And you can see also that was a, uh, an execution flow that was tried to in be injected. So we can see that there was a malicious behavior. And this is perfect. This means that the attacker was re ejected from the exchange server. This is another countermeasure we have. And you can see that it is good. We could uh, reject him from the uh, server, but could we do that also from the network, from the flow, uh, the channel that he is using? This is the SLS, uh, Storm Shield Network Security System, that is one of the tools we have, and and we have, and this is a protocol inspection system on traffic, and the goal is to analyze the flow, the um, network to uh, compare it to signatures to find the uh, different malwares and identification patterns signatures that we can use to detect uh, such uh, ransomware so we go to the uh, administration interface of uh, sls and we will activate ips it was deactivated for this uh, demo but of course it is normally activated by default so you can see that we have the firewall activated showing that uh, now, and now we've activated the ips system so we activate for the first rule these are just uh, filtering rules. We do not advise to do uh, that, of course. So we apply and we save. And now the attackers, we will try again to uh, inject the uh, uh, malware, but he's ejected right away. You can see that no no exploit, no response target is down, seems down. So the signatures was blocked by the SLS, and this is confirmed in the uh, alarm system of SLS. You can see here in alarms, you have a log, and you can see that there was a, an alert here for proxy log logon detected. So th there's an alert for a uh, proxy logon attack, and it was blocked. This is perfect indeed. This allows you to reject the attacker from the network. So this is the first countermeasure from SLS. This is the first one because we have others that are offered with the same system. We have another tool, Bridge Fighter. This allows to analyze files by samples. So Bridge Filter will analyze the file and give you the results. And you can use this with LS, SLS to uh, analyze the uh, files that are uh, in a Dutch file or uh, downloaded. And if it is a malicious file, it will be blocked. Why is it interesting? Well, the attacker, as a reminder, had downloaded himself the uh, the tools. So you could block also this download. So Bridge Fighter is another countermeasure we can implement. But this is not all. We in SNS have also a an IP reputation basis database that is always updated. So this is a list of IP that are malicious. So with this IP database, the SNS will see that an IP is going through the network and block them. This is very interesting if, for example, an attacker is doing a major campaign at the moment. It, their IP will be categorized as malicious and this will allow us to block it too. When exfiltrating the files, the IP will be detected and blocked. So this is, once again, another countermeasure. On this IP repetition thing now, it's important to, to, to know that our CTI teams are updating these databases with our sandbox tools to find the malicious IPs 
and populated uh, database. We also have a partnership with a CCI uh, uh, French act, uh, Sequoia. They are they have added uh, 60,000 uh, IP addresses that are automatically blocked. And our clients tell us that 89% of the attacks are blocked by the uh, IP system. So the 99%, sorry. So the 1% left uh, is still there. Of course, we cannot say that we protect for uh, at 100%. It was, this would be a fake comment, but this really decreases the risk. And so we have a last countermeasure because of course this is a firewall. This means that we have a filtering of the network. And uh, if there was uh, for the attacker first a intelligence uh, with a port forwarding scan. So what do you do is that you have, you let only uh, the uh, important, the needed flow pass through your firewall. So this way you can limit the possibilities when he's scanning or they are scanning your ports uh, that are forwarded. So when you look at the mapping now, there's still a server that was uh, compromised with the application server, and it was used through the shell. But now we have an IPS firewall, and we also have a signature that a, a signature that allows us to detect the malicious files. Uh, let's start back this uh, uh, attack on the log for shell um, on Java. So the script is started by the attacker. So this is a, an exploit from the attacker. They access the uh, authentication portal. And what happens now? Well, the connection has been re-initialized automatically. Why? Well, the administrator right away will see in the console that there was a no, new login and a, uh, an attempt to use the log4j uh, exploit. So it means that the intrusion failed totally. And on the next day, we will not be talking about this attack because nothing will have happened. So this demo showed, allowed us to show you a few countermeasures we are uh, implementing. And now I will give the floor to Sebastian for the conclusion. So. What were we able to discuss today? You can see that a ransomware attack is made of different phases, different stages. And as for all security, such as uh, physical security during uh, robbery, you don't need only a solution to uh, avoid someone to enter your home. No, you want to be there at several uh, stages to make things more difficult for the attacker to enter. It's not possible to uh, make it perfect, but you can at least uh, make it slower so that the administrator can find that something is happening. So for example, proxy logger is not working, I will try something else. But since someone has attacked proxy logger, there will be a log file of it and the administrator can react to it. So with Storm Shield, We've developed a lot of uh, security briefing. You've seen the SNS, the IPS, the uh, IP reputation system, the sandboxing also with Bridge Fighter. We've just discussed that. We also have the anti-ransomware system, the uh, workstation enforcement, and encryption. And all of these solutions together gives you a panel of different systems that does the work, simply. Now we'll try to apply it to a real uh, life case. It's the a Mitra attack that was uh, done by the CTI team. Uh, so a research team, uh, not, not our team, but uh, the CTI team of our uh, one of our colleagues. So we can see what the exploits they were using by uh, to use a log bit. So you can see on the left side all the exploits they've uh, used. So you can see the uh, methods they used to attack through log bit. And on the right side, you have our protections. And you can see that there's uh, IPS, a data protection with uh, a SNS and the endpoint protection also with the firewall. So you can see all the current measures with the IPS on the CV and also the uh, classic uh, firewalling and IP reputation, firewalling inline also 
obviously the VPN of course to connect from outside and double authentication is also a solution when there's a um, credential theft double authentication can help you and then the more you go uh, further the more we talk about uh, workstation protection with PowerShell control, registry and file control. All of this is done by SNS evolution. And then you also have to conclude to avoid the tool transfer. You have the control of logging and all the tools and processes that are used, that are legal but used illegally. And of course, we encrypt the data to avoid exfiltration and shadow copy protection to guarantee the integrity of the system. This was the uh, conclusion of our, our, our deep, deep dive in uh, this uh, uh, tip, type of attacks. And now we can go in deep water and with no risk. And if you have any question, of course, I will give you the microphone. Ah, c'est gentil d'avoir applaudi. Ouais, voilà, merci. J'espère que ça vous a plu. Et... Allez, il y a bien... A question or two Devant, là. Non On the front Oui. It was, it was clear to you Ah, maybe a question over there Bonjour. Uh... Good afternoon uh, about the rules you implement what is the format you are using is it a proprietary format or do you or would I, I just had a question about that yes indeed if you're talking about the security uh, rules we have in our uh, scs and sns uh, these are proprietary uh, rules that uh, we do for our boxes it's configured uh, by default so Ah, but you're talking about the signatures. Well, we have a SNS engine, uh, an ASQ SNG, SNS engine that is uh, proprietary also. And since it's the case, we are not using a normal format. We have our own format for uh, the rules. And so, you, do you have bridges, for example? If you take the case, this case, I, I have uh, my own uh, for format. Uh, can I uh, convert them into your format, even in a degrade degraded way? No, it's not possible. Why? Because this engine, this engine is too proprietary and we can interpret the information, but this is something that manual. That we cannot automate this kind of bridging. That's very interesting. Uh... This would be interesting, indeed, but we come back to that later. This wouldn't give us the same uh, uh, fine tuning in our ruling. Someone else? Another question? I have a few questions more advanced on APT. So this was uh, more about standard APT and ransomware use, but I'm talking here about APT on uh, network traffic with uh, HTTPS or HTTP with uh, hidden communication, something a bit more advanced with uh, someone that is staying inside, hidden rather than a natic opportunistic attack uh, with ransomware, someone that's uh, using just a normal interpreter. Uh, I'm talking here about a zero D attack or something else, uh, something of this type, uh, something that uh, would be detected by EDR and using behavioral analysis. Uh, so uh, from the SLS uh, that can analyze the IP that is connecting to another. I would like to know how your system works. This is a very good question indeed. The demo was uh, planned to be quite uh, simple, to be understandable, but we've seen that we have this SES that is blocking exploits by default without a specific signature. 
and we had to give an authorization, an exception to this for the um, exploit to work because in, this means that a zero day exploit wouldn't work. Then you have the, the compliance to protocols that is by default implemented for all the protocols we have, industrial wants to. And this uh, compliance system means that the uh, CVE exploits are blocked at the zero day stage too. So for example, when the teams of Pierre Olivier do uh, CVE analysis, and this is what they do every day, well, we don't have to develop a, a signature because our uh, general rules do block the exploit already. And I can not, of course, do general ruling for everything, but many are blocked by default. And you are trying to get to develop these uh, general, uh, generic uh, signature. Then about machine learning, we do not do that on the network flow, but we do that for our sandboxing. Uh, we are uh, developing a uh, machine learning tool for uh, sandboxing. And I hope I've answered your question. And it's 3 p.m. So this would be the last question. If there are no questions, thank you for being here today. And I wish you a great event. Merci. Merci.